but I worry You never show up late And you don't make mistakes I'm not in a hurry No I'm walking at your pace Cause you showed a better way In the night I won't be afraid You by my side So I know I'm okay So I will sing At the top of my lungs The loudest praise And it goes like hey, You never change Your love is strong And it won't fade away And oh You never let go Every day I will sing your praise What are you doing, John? Oh, nothing. It's just a little routine oil change. Yeah. It's gonna make it run good. Hello, people. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. <laughs> uh, and today we're going to spend some time talking about what it means to have integrity. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Woo! Okay, Brandon. <laughs> yes, John. You want to tell me what's going on with you today? Uh, what do you mean? That, that, that right there. What is, what is going on? What's well, happening? No, nothing. I, I'm, just, I'm just commemorating the moment, you know, for posterity. Oh. Did yeah. something special happen that I don't know about? Maybe. <laughs> well, don't just leave us in suspense. What happened? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Brandon! Okay, so you remember how yesterday I was just plain, ordinary, not at all special, blah, Brandon. What? No. Well, well today, <laughs> all that's changed. Today, I'm special. I'm important. I matter. Because today, in the parking lot outside the buy and save supermarket, I found somebody's lost wallet. I, I don't understand. Why does that make you so... Oh, don't you see, John? All I have to do is open up this wallet and there's free money inside. Money I didn't have yesterday. I can go spend it on all the things I ever wanted and no one ever has to know I didn't even earn it. I could buy, I could buy the 
latest, most expensive cell phone on the market. I'll take two. I could buy the most fashionable clothes. <laughs> How droll. I could get a new car. A new house. A robot butler. How may I be of service? Get me a soda. Shaken, not stirred. Thank you, Jeeves. I could have everything I've ever wanted. How much money is in that wallet? I don't know. Because, you know, robot butlers are really expensive R right now. Oh, good call. Here, let me check. Oh. How much? It's $37.85. Oh. Still, I can buy. I'd like two tickets to see Planet Smasher 7, please. That'll be $38. Oh, man. You know, it doesn't really matter how much is in there. That's somebody's wallet. I lose my wallet all the time, and it's a really stressful thing when I can't find it. Don't you think you should try and find out who this wallet belongs to and return it to them? Yeah, there is a phone number here. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, let's weigh the pros and cons. Okay, if I don't give the wallet back, free money. If I give it back, no free money. Mm-hmm. If I don't give the wallet back, no one ever has to know. But if I give it back, if I give it back. Do we have to do this again? Excuse me, mm -hmm. is this your wallet? Yes, it is. Thank you so much for your integrity. As a reward, you can have my house. Really? Mm. And my robot butler. Me, me. Me. Hooray! Me, me, me. Okay, this is going to require another strategy. <clears throat> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey, Kellen. Uh, is he gonna be okay? I'm hoping the Bible story will snap him out of it. Uh, okay, well, let's get to it. Today's story is about Daniel. Way ahead of you, Kellen. I shot a movie of today's story. Oh, I'm not sure we have time for a whole movie. Well, how about just the trailer? I don't see why not. <laughs> Great! <laughs> but before you get started, would you mind if I gave some backstory? Not at all, but make it quick. I don't think he's breathing. Oh, well, at the beginning of our story, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, sent out his armies to conquer the nation of Judah, God's chosen people. King Nebuchadnezzar took the treasure from God's temple, and he took many young men captive. One of those men was Daniel. Yeah, got it. I'll take it from here. Boom. In the kingdom of Babylon, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar. Ashpenaz! Bring me some captives to serve in my court. And make sure they're noblemen and healthy. And make sure that they are smart and can learn anything. Teach them to read and write. 
the Babylonian language. Feed them the royal food and wine from my table. Hmm? What are you still doing here? Go, go, go! Far away from their home in Judah, captives were brought to Babylon to serve the king. Daniel and his friends had no idea what was in store. Wow, look at the size of this place. <laughs> Can you believe this, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah? Uh-huh. No way! This is crazy, Daniel. I'm sorry, I forgot. Your names were changed to Babylonian names. So you're Shadrach, you're Meshach, you're Abednego? Yep. That's me! Nailed it! Yeah, hey, well, don't feel so bad. My name got changed to Belteshazzar. <laughs> oh, good, good. I wonder if there's anything here to eat. Oh, hey! Let's see. No. No. If I eat this, I'll be unclean! No! Okay, that's great so far. Mostly accurate. Daniel and his friends were worried about eating the king's food, but I doubt it was because it was mayonnaise. But maybe. Mm, sure. Truth is, we don't really know what problem they had with the royal food. We just know that eating it would have gone against the rules they grew up with. So they came up with a plan to stay true to what they believed. On it. To maintain their integrity, Daniel and his friends would need a little help. Look, there's a guard. Let's talk to him. Excuse me, guard? Yes. These are my friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hello. Hi, uh, What's up? Hello. We can't eat the king's food. It's against the rules. It'll make us unclean. You don't live in Judah anymore. You live in Babylon. No one will know if you break the rules. We would know. I have my orders. What would you have me do? Well, um, test us for 10 days. Just give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then, uh, Compare those people who ate the king's food to us. See how they look. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Pass that down to. Oh, hey. Yeah. Abednego. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Three different arms. For ten days, the guard gave Daniel and his friends nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. After the 10 days were over, Daniel and his friends looked better than any of the men who ate the king's food. Yeah, not only that, God gave them great wisdom and God gave Daniel the ability to understand dreams. In all of Babylon, the king couldn't find anyone who was their equal. Okay, big finish. Some called him Daniel. Others built a Shazar. But one thing everyone could agree on Daniel had integrity. Coming this fall to a theater near you, probably. Mayonnaise Fever Dream. Nice work on the movie trailer. Yeah, I'll probably change the title. I think that would be best. No one would have known if Daniel and his friends had eaten the king's food, but they chose not to anyway. Yep. Sometimes we are faced with temptations to do things that we know are unwise or untruthful. And we may even get away with it without anyone finding out. But it's in those moments we have to make a choice. Do we do what's easy or do we do what we know is right? Yeah, I think I see what you mean. Choices like that are hard to make on our own sometimes. So remember to ask God for help and to think about how Jesus would handle the situation. That's something that helps me. You know, you're right, Kellen, it helps me too. Thanks for the story. Yep, I'll see you next time. So, have you decided what you're gonna do? <sighs> Almost, but this is a hard choice. Okay, well, while you're thinking about it, let's do this. Reveal the question. 
Oh, yeah. When is it hard to do what's right? Well, it's sometimes hard to do what's right when you think your way is better. It's hard to do what's right when no one ever has to know you did something wrong. <laughs> or when everyone else is doing the wrong thing. But, like Kellen says, when it's hard to do what's right, God can help you make the wise choice. Oh, you're calling the owner. Yep. That's awesome. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm getting a phone call, too. Uh, hello? Hello. I found your wallet. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. I didn't even realize that I didn't have it on, uh, on me. Oh. Oh, I thought, I thought that wallet looked familiar. Thank you. No problem. Want to go to the movies? It's on me. Sure. Okay. That's all the time we have today. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So and So Show. Could you please hang what? up the phone? Sure. Where would you like to go? <laughs> this is lovely. I know. It's I very... know. So what? What? Can... Jeeves, can you bring us a snack? Oh, yeah. a snack. Meat boop. A snack. Thank you. Oh. I have a snack. Yum. What is that? It's a, it's a, it's a stuffed giraffe. Oh. Um, I think he meant, I must have snack giraffe. It's got the same ass sound. Can I get something to drink? Just something ice cold? Jeeves gets ice, I, ice cold. Boy, he's bringing a big drink. Wow, what is this? Ah, ice cold. Milk. Yum. Milk. Okay. That is glue. Oh, it's glue. It's gluey glue. Jeeves, <laughs> tell us a joke. Yeah. Joke incoming. Yum. Yum. That is. I guess you had to. Yeah, be there. I guess it didn't have to be there. <laughs> yeah, nothing like a punchline, no setup. It's kind of like our entire show. Oh. Sorry.